Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be going through each and every civilization in Age of Empires 2. We currently have 42 of them and I'll be giving you guys the ideal composition you want to aim for to have the most success in the late game. Keep in mind here I'm not talking about the best composition however the best composition usually consists of a ton of gold units and it's often very unachievable in your average game and it's unrealistic for me to expect you guys to get there pretty much every time. So aiming for the ideal composition which is going to be consisting usually of one trash unit, one gold unit and one siege unit is a much more realistic approach to the game and will give you guys consistency as well as a very strong goal to achieve every game. There's going to be something in this video for everyone because I'm going to be going through every civilization and I'm just going to go through them alphabetically and leave timestamps throughout the video so you can jump through whichever civilization you want to go for. All right guys let's hop right in and starting off with the Aztecs. All right, so for the Aztecs, you've got a few options in the late game, but for me, the best composition is revolving around the Eagle Warrior. So I'd like to go for Elite Eagle Warriors and combining them with Skirmishers using the Atlato technology makes for a very strong composition with a very mobile and strong unit at the front. And the Skirmisher actually has high DPS with that unique upgrade. So you get to take out Archer units, but you can also take out a lot of other units as well because you get that extra damage and range. As far as the Siege unit and the Supporting units, I'd like to go for Monks and Trebuchets as the units I used to push because monks have a ton of HP and can convert all kinds of things and the trebuchets will be used to kill buildings. Moving on now to the Bengalis. Bengalis is a rather simple composition. You want to play around the Wrath of 100%. It's by far your best unit and pretty much the only one that sets them apart from other civs in late game. So play with the Wrathah and as far as supporting units go, you have a couple options. Halbadia, Skirm, or Lightcap can all be good depending on the situation. So I'll leave that open for you guys to decide. And then for the Siege units, I almost always recommend you go for Trebuchets or Armored Elephants. It's by far the two best options that Bengalis have. But again, I emphasize how strong the Wrathahs are for the civilization. Always go for them. Next up we've got the Berbers and Berbers is rather simple. Camel Archer is your best DPS unit in late game and it's a very strong unit, hard for a lot of civilizations to deal with it as well. So I'd recommend you go for Camel Archers and then supporting them, obviously the Hussar, you get cheaper Hussar with the Berbers as well as fully upgraded Hussar and so that's going to be your raiding unit and the unit you use to counter skirmishers and snipe siege. For your siege units, Bomber Cans and Trebuchets to push units and buildings would be the best options. Moving on now to the Bohemians. Bohemians have another very simple death ball composition here, and it's going to be the Halberdier plus the Hoofneets as your main composition here. Hoofneets is of course just the Bomber Cannon with their upgrade. And then just to support that composition and give you some consistent DPS, I recommend you go with some Arbalest behind it all as well. You have options to go for monks that only cost food, but honestly, I don't think it's really necessary. I'd much rather have Arbalest, Halberdier, and Hoofneets as my composition. Next up, we've got the Britons. Now for the Britons, ideally you want to have Longbowmen in the late game. However, if you're running low on castles or you have a big ball of Arbalest, Arbalest are also just fine as your DPS unit in the back. And then to support them, I recommend going for the Halberdier pretty much every time you're facing any kind of cavalry. Halberdier gets you a, a ton of protection onto those Longbowmen and Arbalest. And you're not really dying to skirmishers because your Longbowmen have a ton of extra range and they have a good amount of damage as well. So dealing with skirms is rather easy with Britons. However, just to make things a little bit easier at dealing with skirmishers, we're going to go ahead and use for Siege, our Warwolf Trebuchet, which does fantastic slash damage against enemy skirms, also lets us push buildings from a large distance. Britons have an amazing death ball, and you can usually push from pretty far away, so you stay rather safe, and Halberdier just prevents you from getting overwhelmed by cavalry. Longbowmen, Halbs, and Warwolf Trebs, extremely solid composition for the Civ. Next up, we've got the Bulgarians, and Bulgarians either have the option of gearing towards infantry or gearing towards their cavalry and siege. I personally like to go for a little bit of a mix and recommend Hussar as your main unit. Hussar, of course, with stirrups are fantastic. And just to spend our gold, we're gonna go ahead and go for some heavy siege. I recommend going for Siege Onager slash Siege Ram to push buildings and also take out mass range units and even mass Halbadir from our opponents. And just to cover all our bases and to protect our siege, we're gonna also go Halbadir ourselves. So we're gonna have Halbadir, Hussar, and Siege Onager plus Siege Ram, and that's going to make for a very big death ball, as well as the option to raid with those strong Hussars. Moving on now to the Burgundians. Burgundians are a civilization that thrives off double gold composition, but I'll give you guys a very good reasoning behind it. For Burgundians, I recommend going for Coutelier or Coutelier as your main cavalry units, and I also recommend supporting them with Hand Cannoneer because the Hand Cannoneer do a ton of extra damage. You kill Halberdier, you kill other cavalry with them, and the Coutelier can do amazing at sniping enemy units, especially Arbalest and even Cav Archers to some degree. And the reason you want to go for double gold comp with Burgundians is because you're not trying to play the trash war in the late game. You're 
actually want to end the game rather fast with the civilization and usually you pick up some relics so you have some extra gold to spare. The idea is you use double gold units to make a big push on your opponent and whittle down their army. As soon as you get even the slightest of leads, go up to 140, 150 vils and then just go for Flemish Revolution, send in all those Flemish militia and take out your opponent one shot. It's a very overpowered way to play the civilization and I highly recommend you try it out if you haven't already. And then just for your siege, Bomber Cannon or Treb do just fine. All right, next up, we've got the Burmese. For Burmese, it's pretty simple. You're gonna go with Halberdier and Champion as your main units. Mainly Halberdier, but sometimes Champion can come in because the infantry is gonna be really solid. And then I also want you guys to mix in some Arambai as your main DPS units. And then for your Siege, well, Siege and Monk, we're gonna go for Monks with cheap technologies, which are a fantastic supporting units, and then simply Bomber Cannon or Trebs to push buildings. Next up, we've got the Byzantine. Byzantine are the king of counter units, and you've got a few options in late game, actually a lot of options in late game. It's a very flexible civilization, but generally speaking, you wanna use your trash units to the best ability. In my opinion, the best late game comp for the Byzantine is going to be Habadir, Skirmisher, and then simply go with Siege and Monks to support them as well. So we spend no gold on units, pretty much. Just spam those cheap trash units, and then use our gold on Monks and Siege to slow push buildings. I will say though, make use of Cataphracts if you're up against heavy infantry, it's by far your best tool to deal with them. But you also have hand cannon near that can come in and heavy camels, so it's really quite flexible. So that's the best tip for Byzantine, stay flexible, but make use of those trash units. Next up, we got the Celts, and in my opinion, the best composition is going to be Halberdier plus Siege Onager and Siege Ram, kind of similar to how Bulgarians want to play. You want to spend your gold on Siege mainly, and then as your main army, just Halberdier to defend them. It's actually a very good composition, and the only danger to it is the fact that you're not very mobile, so keep that in mind when playing the Celts. You can also use trebuchets if you want to push buildings at a large distance. Next up, we got the Chinese, and for the Chinese, it's gonna be pretty simple. Arbalest for the most part, or Chukunu if you have the castles, followed up by some light cav and trebuchets. The main thing to know as Chinese is that you wanna get the advantage in the mid game, and your late game, you should already be having a small lead going into it, and then you just wanna go into strong power units like Arbalest, followed up with some light cav to raid, and then trebs to push buildings. Rather straightforward game plan there. Moving on to the Cumans now. I know a lot of you guys might not be a big fan of the Kipchak because you're missing Bracer, but the Kipchak is actually a very decent late game unit. So I recommend going for the Elite Kipchak plus Hussar as your main composition and Bomber Cannons, you'll be golden. Don't forget to get their unique tech that lets you produce the Hussars faster from the stables. Next up, we've got the Dravidians, and the big thing about Dravidians is to remember their unique tech, Woot Steel, which gives their units the ability to ignore armor. This makes your Light Cav, Halberdier, and even your unique unit, Arumi Swordsman, quite strong. But the main composition is gonna be revolving around Skirmishers, Bombard Cannons, and either Halberdier Champion or Arumi Swordsman as your main infantry units. That's gonna be the best way to play the civilization going into late game. You also have the option to play Arbalest though, so feel free to play around with that if you need to. But the Skirmisher being a strong option because it attacks faster, definitely the way to play the civilization in the late game. Moving on now, we've got the Ethiopians. I genuinely believe that Arbalest plus Halberdier and following that up with Torsion Engine Bombard Cannon is the best way to play the civilization. It's kind of similar to Britain's where you have like a really strong death ball, except that Ethiopians do it from a much closer distance. So you have to be a little bit more careful from skirmishers, but in general, the Torsion Engine Bombard Cannons should help you deal with those. Next up, we've got the Franks, and for the Franks, I actually recommend a very unique strategy. Try to overwhelm your opponent with Paladin. It sounds dumb, but Paladin can actually destroy Halbs if you get enough of them. And the whole idea is you want to go up to a high pop, make a ton of Paladin, take one fight against the Halberdier and hope to win it very convincingly. And then using that momentum, go ahead and raid your opponent to death with those Paladin. And then just to follow it up, we will need a Halberdier counter eventually. I recommend simply going for some Skirmishers, or similar to Burgundians, how we want to go with double gold comp. We can mix in some Throy Axemen, or some hand cannon near to deal with those halbs. Definitely try to end the game early with the Franks because once you run out of gold, it can get really tricky. If you have five relics though, or four relics, then you can take a little bit more time. Next up, we've got the Goths, and the Goths are gonna be all about the infantry for late game. My best composition to recommend here is gonna be Halberdier and Huskerl, because Huskerl will deal with raiding enemy archer units, and the Halberdier just covers your base against all kinds of cavalry. If your opponent is on mass infantry or something crazy like Teutonic Knight, you can simply just use the hand cannoneer to counter those. But I recommend for the most part playing with Huskerl and Halberdier, and then for your siege units, Bomber Cannon and Treb do just fine. But for the most part, Goths don't really care too much about siege, it's really about spamming those infantry infantry and raiding your opponent to death. 
Next up, we've got the Gurjaras, and now Gurjaras, they have a few options to go for in the late game. I highly recommend you get the unique tech that makes their food units cheaper, because that's just gonna help you out a ton with their composition. You've got a couple of routes to take with Gurjaras. Either you go for the unique units as your powerhouse, or you go for their cavalry units. But in my opinion, and the one I'm gonna recommend, go for their unique units. It's insanely strong right now. So you go for the Shakram Thrower, and then just to follow it up in the front line, we're gonna go for either Shiramsha Rider or Hassar. Go for Shiramsha Rider if you've got a little bit of extra gold. Go for Hassar if gold is super tight. And then for your siege, you just simply go for trebuchets and bomber cannons, which is the main siege units to push buildings. All right, now we're gonna be taking a look at Hindustani. And Hindustani, although they've got very strong camels, my favorite composition with them is actually to go for Hand Cannoneer and Hazar. Although I will say Imperial Camel and Skirmisher is a close second. So I'll give you guys two compositions with the civilization just because they're completely different. In both cases, the siege will always be Bomber Cannon and Trebuchet. Once again, those two units, depending on which one you go for, are gonna be great against buildings. And just one last note to think about, the Ghulam is gonna be a great counter to certain civilizations, but it is rather other situational. Next up, we've got the Huns. They're very similar to Hindustani. They've got a couple compositions that they can play, but in my opinion, the best one by far in most cases is gonna be Heavy Cab Archer, which are cheaper, and Hussar. If you're a Siege, go with Trebuchets. You've got more accuracy on them. Next up, we've got the Incas. Incas definitely want to be going for their Kamayuk or their Elite Eagle Warrior as your main unit, depending on which one you want to go for. The difference is pretty simple. Kamayuk are going to be better when massed. Not as good as raiding, but they're going to be doing more damage, and they're pretty much stronger versus infantry and cavalry. Eagles will be stronger against archer units and stronger as a raiding unit in general, but both are very good in the front line and in the back line. I recommend simply going for skirmishers, and then for your siege units, you can go for some trebuchets or some siege rams. So pretty strong composition there with the Incas. If you're up against heavy cavalry, Kamiya will be better. If you're up against archers, Eagles will be better. Halberdier is always an option with the Civ as well. Next up, we've got the Italians. Now, Italians get to a composition that, in my opinion, is one of the best in the game for one of you in Arabia, but it feels so hard to get to this composition that it's like, it almost feels like the civilization can't shine because of how slow it is to get to this late game comp. But the idea is you wanna play Genoese Crossbow plus Hussar plus Bomber Cannon. This is an incredibly strong composition because the Genoese Crossbow will be insane against any cavalry or cavalry archer unit your opponent makes, and the Hussar will kill skirmishers and siege and also get you some raids. So combining that with the Bomber Cannon or the to be able to push buildings just leaves a very strong death ball and flexible army for the Italians. But like I said, the downside is that you can't always get the Genoese crossbow. If you can't get to them, just make Arbless instead and it's still pretty decent. Next up, we've got the Japanese. Shout out Spirit of the Law. I always have to do that. But for Japanese, we've got the best late game comps for them is probably going to be Halberdier plus Arbalest. And then because you don't have the best siege, like you only have the trebuchet as the option, I recommend mixing in some towers to go for a slow push. So while you're pushing with trebuchets using the unique tech Caterpillar Ruder or whatever it's called, and your trash units, make some Yasama towers to help that push and also to control the sides of the map. Yasama towers are actually quite insane, and I highly I recommend going for them with the Japanese to push your opponent and to take ground across the map. Next up, we've got the Khmer. Now the Khmer have a few options in late game, but my best recommendation is to simply spam out those Hussar as your main unit. Because your farms work so fast, Khmer Hussar are gonna be extremely spammable. And then following that up with either Heavy Scorpions or Ballista Elephants will be your main composition going into any game of Arabia here with Khmer. Although this is a very hard composition to get to, because you have such an amazing economy, it is viable. Heavy Scorpion and Ballista Elephants are expensive. So if you can't get to either of those options, Go for Arbalest as the DPS unit in the back, but I recommend you try to go for Scorpions or for Ballista Elephants because they're much more powerful. And then just for Siege, simply going for Travis, you'll have no problems there. All right, next up, we've got the Koreans playing very similar to the Japanese. We want to play with usually Arbalest and Halberdier as the main composition. The reason I don't include War Wagons is because War Wagons can be difficult to get to. However, similar to Khmer, if you can get to War Wagons with Koreans, definitely War Wagons can be a really good backline unit. So Arbalest or Wagons mixed in with some Halberdier and then using those towers to slow push and take ground across the map is an amazing way to play with Koreans. Remember, you do get the keep upgrade for free. And then for your Siege, just use Bomber Cannon or Trebuchet to push buildings. 
Next up, we got the Lithuanians, and Lithuanians now with the Winged Hussar can be a very interesting late game civilization. I recommend though you play with the Lightest. Get some relics and play with the Lightest. The Lightest is a crazy strong unit, has a ton of damage, and even ignores armor. And supporting the Lightest, you go with those very strong and fast moving Lithuanian skirmishers. And then for your siege, it's gonna be once again Bomber Cannons and Trebuchet. Extremely strong composition, but it does rely on you getting a few relics to really find the full power. Next up, we've got the Maggars, and that's going to be thriving on 1v1 Arabia with heavy cav archers with recurve bow, don't forget it, and Maggar Hussar as the, the trash unit in the front. Maggar Hussar have an attack bonus for Siege, and they have better stats than a standard Hussar, so they're going to be the best option to go for it with the Civ. And then for your Siege unit, it's once again just going to be the Trebuchet. Maggars don't have amazing Siege, and you simply don't need it. Heavy CA, Maggar Hussar, and Trebuchets is all you'll need with the Civ. Next up, we've got the Malay, and for the Malay, it's going to be pretty simple. How about the Arbalest and Bombard Cannons? Not much to really say with the Civ. You have Karambits as an option and those cheap two-handed swordsmen, but honestly, I feel like both those units are situational, and I'd only go into them to counter Eagle Warriors most of the time, or like Husk Girls or something like that. But for the most part, How about the Arbalest and Bombard Cannon will be the push to go for with Malay. And keep in mind, you probably have to end the game early with Malay because your late game is not that impressive. The last thing I'll mention, though, is the fact that you have those cheap elephants if your opponent is not on a uh, mass archer units or mass halberdier. Next up, we've got the Malians, and Malians now, very interesting civilization, especially with the longer lasting gold right now. And because you have a lot of gold in the late game, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend a double gold comp with the Civ, and that's gonna be some sort of cavalry. So cavalier slash light calf slash heavy camel, depending on what you need. And then following that up, we wanna play with hand cannoneer or gibetto, but gibetto is usually harder to get to. So let's say hand cannoneer. And then for the siege, it's going to be simply bombard cannons. Next up, we've got the Mayans. Mayans are gonna be a civilization thriving with their plumed archer or their arbalest as a backline DPS. And Mayans, because of their longer lasting resources, you tend to get more gold. And once again, I'm gonna suggest a double gold comp. So you have a couple options with Mayans. You go either plumes or arbalest as your DPS unit. And then for your frontline unit, you wanna go for the halberdier or the elite eagle warrior, depending on what you need to accomplish. Halberdier is good against cavalry, and if you're up against skirms and archers, eagle warrior is gonna be much, much better. You also have the double javelin skirmishers and those are pretty decent once the gold starts to run out for your siege unit simply use siege ram or trebuchet Next up, we've got the Mongols. This is known for their late game composition. Mangadai and Hassar. And I'm gonna spice that up a little bit for you guys and add Siege Ram slash Siege Onager for the Siege. I recommend you use those really speedy Siege units to break buildings and to break enemy armies. And Mangadai in general are just such a powerhouse unit that Mongols getting to late game means you're gonna win more often than not. So highly recommend you try out Mangadai, Hassar, and then for your Siege, Siege Ram or Siege Onager with the speed technology from the castle. Next up, we've got the Persians. Persians do have the war elephants, but that's a very unrealistic thing to get to, and they're quite frankly too easy to counter with monks and halberdier. And so for the Persians, I recommend simply going for paladin and then switching it up and going for the trash bow to counter the halberdier. Trash bow slash skirmisher mix can be fantastic. And then for the siege unit, it's gonna be simply bomber cannon or trebuchet for the most part. Moving on now to the Poles. Poles have an amazing unit in late game, and that is called the Obuch. Obuch is actually one of those infantry units that's fantastic, but it's not the only option that Poles can go for. They also have the Cavalry that are cheaper and the Winged Hussar. So for the Poles, I'll give you a couple options. I either recommend you go for the Cavalry route and you go for the Winged Hussar and you follow that up with Arbalest behind. In my opinion, that's the best late game comp with Poles, using the amazing farms to spam up those Hussars. But if you don't wanna go for those for whatever reason, you can't get the Cavalry, then I recommend playing with Obuch plus skirmisher it's also a very strong unit composition and then for your siege in either case you want to go for trebuchet or bomber cannon Moving on now, we've got the Portuguese. Portuguese are gonna be great at going with a ton of gold units. So I recommend playing with Arbalest as the main unit in the back line. And then following that up, we're gonna have Halberdier or Light Cavalry in the front line, depending on what we wanna go ahead and counter. You also have the option to play Organ Gun instead of Arbalest as your DPS units. But in my opinion, Arbalest just feels to be much better more often than not. Organ Gun is more powerful, but it does less consistent damage and it's a bit harder to get to. So either or, but definitely mix in some Halberdier and some Light Cav in the front line. 
And then for your siege units, I recommend the bomber cannon with the unique tech to make their gunpowder units have ballistics pretty much. And so their bomber cannons are going to be monstrous in the late game. And then also with Portuguese, I want to add, you definitely have to go for Fatorias to have a lot of gold in the late game, gold and stone. And with that gold and stone, I recommend you put bomber towers everywhere on the field. So bomber towers, arbalest, halberdier is going to be the composition of choice. And then for the siege, just simply the bomber cannon with the unique tech. Next up, we've got the Saracens, and Saracens are gonna fall into the category that has a powerhouse unit. So for the Saracens, you can either go for one of two options once again. You either go for the standard Arbalest and Hussar line, which is obviously a stock standard composition. You also have the option to go Heavy Cam Archer plus Hussar, very similar. But then the other composition is gonna be Heavy Camel with 170 HP late game plus Skirmisher. And I'll even give you a third composition, which is Pure Mamelukes. Pure Mamelukes can be really strong against Cavalry Civilizations, so really, We've got a ton of options with the Saracens and I'll give you the same advice I gave you for Byzantine. Stay flexible and do whatever you need based on the matchup but those are a few good compositions that you can aim for. In my opinion the main one that you're going to go for more often than not is going to be simply Arbalest and Hussar with the Civ. Moving on to the Sicilians now, I highly recommend you play with their Hoburg Cavalry right now. They will get nerfed because you get 33% bonus damage reduction instead of the current 50%. But for Sicilians, it's going to be their best unit by far because those Cavalry units with a ton of Pierce Armor and the resistance against Halbadir are incredibly difficult to stop. So I recommend going for those Hoburg Cavalier plus Skirmishers plus Trebuchets as your main composition here. You also could mess around with the Sergeants instead of going for the Cavalry, but Sergeants are pretty situational I think so if you do want to go for sergeants I recommend going sergeants plus halberdier plus trebuchet as the siege Moving on now to the Slavs, it's gonna be played similar to the Celts. We're gonna have Halberdier plus Siege Onager slash Siege Ram, but just to follow it up, we're gonna have Hussar also as an option to raid with the Slavs. So Halberdier, Hussar, and then Heavy Siege. Moving on now to the Spanish, it's going to be a very interesting composition here. We're going to be playing an MBL style for Spanish because I truly believe it's the best way to play it. You get supremacy on your villagers to make them extremely tanky and strong in combat. And I'm going to use that and go for Bombard Towers as your main gold spending option. And then we're going to play Halberdier and Hussar as the main units that we'll use to snipe siege and to raid our opponents and to defend ourselves against cavalry. Next up, we've got the Tatars. Now, Tatars have two compositions that I want to mention that are equally as good in my opinion. Heavy Cav Archer and Hussar. You get the Pierce Armor upgrade or the armor upgrade in, in general right now from the castle to support both those units. And uh, you're going to be having an extremely strong composition. And then for the Siege units, you always go for the Trebs with extra range for Tatars. So Heavy CA, Hussar plus Treb. Or the other one is going to be Keshek because the Keshek is insanely strong plus Skirmisher to deal with Halbs plus the Trebuchet as the Siege unit. So two compositions equally as strong. You decide based on the game. Next up, we've got the Teutons, and the Teutons that will be played kind of similar to Slavs and Celts for the most part. It's going to be Halberdier plus Bombard Cannon slash Onagers. Trebuchet is also in the mix if you want it. So just Halberdier and Siege for the most part with Teutons is a very good composition. If you want to have another layer to this composition, I recommend mixing in some Monks. That's going to be amazing. The reason why I don't recommend going for Cavalry with Teutons is because you don't have amazing trash. So if you soak all your gold going Paladin, it's going to be very hard to play a late game with Teutons afterwards so I recommend you save your gold for siege and monks and even some hand cannoneers sometimes rather than just invest it all onto paladin next up we've got the Turks for the Turks, a powerhouse in the late game. I recommend Heavy Cav Archer plus Hussar, which you get for free as far as the upgrades with extra Pierce Armor, by the way. So Heavy CA with extra HP, Sepahi from the castle, Hussar with extra Pierce Armor from the unique bonus, and then Bomber Cannons with the unique tech Artillery, giving them plus two range. So many bonuses on this already strong late game composition. Turks are gonna be a massive powerhouse come late game, and I actually really like that composition for them. It's by far the best. All right, now we're gonna be talking about the Vietnamese. The late game comp that you wanna aim for is going to be Rathen Archers plus Halberdier and for the Siege, Bombard Cannons. You can also go Arbalest if you can't aim for Rathen Archers. The Rathen Archers are much better than Arbalest in pretty much every case. So I recommend you try to go for them. It's a strong, unique unit in late game. You do have the light cap for raids if you need it as well. 
All right, next up, we've got the Vikings. And for the Vikings, I recommend going for Skirmisher and Berserker as the late game comp. I used to recommend Arbalest, but missing Thumbring means that Arbalest late game are not gonna be amazing. You can still go for Arbalest and early Imp if you have some crossbows left over, but I really recommend aiming for Berserks right now because it's a strong unit and it's a good front line. And then just to counter the, the weaknesses of Berserks, meaning they die to Hand Cannoneer and Arbalest, we can go for Skirmishers to deal with that. And then for the Siege, we go for either Siege Ram or Trebuchets and you'll be golden with the Vikings. All right, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you guys learned something. If you disagree with any of the compositions or if you feel like I missed anything, do let me know in the comments below. I love to have healthier discussion around my videos. And in general, let me know your feedback on this format. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.